So this will be a very brief recap of the Clean Air Act because we did discuss this in Unit 6. Um, but I just wanted to remind you of some of the topics we covered in that unit and as they pertain to the Clean Air Act. So as you recall, um, as industrialization took hold in the early 1900s, it led to a lot of uh, large-scale pollution events. And by the 1950s, people were starting to get the message that this was a huge problem and that we had to do something to regulate pollution so that it would not endanger lives to the extent that it was. And some different um, events that happened in the mid-1900s includes um, the Cuyahoga River, which burst into flames because of the large amount of um, contaminants that were floating on the surface of the water that were flammable. That happened in November of 1952. Then Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, came out in 1962. That book was instrumental in um, discussing chemical contaminants and, and in particular pesticides and the damage that they caused on human health but also on ecosystems. And so at this time we started to think about health in a broader sense and not just looking at human health but looking at health of the biological community around us. Um, and then in 1969 there was a, a big oil spill. It was the largest one at the time in history and that was right off the coast of California near Santa Barbara and this also um, fed into um, the legislation that happened in 1970 which we will get to in a second. So if we look at air quality in particular since we're talking about air quality in this chapter or unit sorry then um, there's a few different events that took place in the around the 1950s so in October of 1948, 20 people were killed in Denora, Pennsylvania at a zinc smelter um, air, around the area around the zinc smelter. And um, that was a, an air pollution cloud and an inversion layer that socked that pollution in and caused a toxic smog that killed people. Um, in 1952, more than 4,000 people were killed by um, a, a killer fog in London. And then over Thanksgiving weekend in 1953, 230 people died um, during a six-day smog event. And so people started to get the message at this point. They're starting to see that this is air pollution is not just yucky and gross, but it's actually deadly. So this led to the legislation, and this is the, the important take-home point. Um, this led to the legislation that we initially started the, the initial Clean Air Act. So the initial Clean Air Act didn't really have any bite to it. It provided funds to study and improve air quality, but it didn't provide any regulation authority. And so in 1970, the first major Clean Air Act amendment is the one that we usually refer to when we're talking about the Clean Air Act. So that 1970 first major Clean Air Act, amend Clean Air Act amendment um, established authority so that the government could monitor and limit the amount of certain criteria pollutants that were in the atmosphere and make sure that the air was safe to breathe. Um, at the same time, so in the same year, on December 2nd of 1970, the Environmental Protection Agency was established by Congress under the authority of President Nixon. And so President Nixon had visited that beach area in California that had had the very large oil spill just the year before, you know, that year before, and he was, it, it really had a big impact on him, and so he became very interested in Clean Air Act and environmental protections, and so this agency was established um, under him in 1970. Um, and then in 1990, the Clean Air Act was, had, had another big amendment. And at that time, um, it allowed for controlling of acid rain pollution and protecting the stratospheric ozone layer. So at the time, people were very concerned that there was, quote, a hole in the ozone layer. It's not really a hole in the layer, but 
the, um, the concentration of ozone in the stratosphere was decreasing a lot. And um, of course, that ozone layer is very important to protect us from skin cancer and our environment to from other um, types of damage from ozone, uh, not from ozone, but from UV light that can come through the atmosphere if that protective ozone layer is not there.